Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of Film Study. This is Ken McCusick, and it's time for our first matchup show of the season. We're going to look at the offense versus the Kansas City Chiefs and two things each of us would like to see in terms of this ball game. And joining me, of course, is co-host Frazier Tafar. Frazier, how you doing? Been a long off season. Yeah, ready to go on uh, Thursday night. Glad to be here, Ken. Uh, it's been a long, how many months has it been? Nine months since the AFC championship loss. And uh, it's, I'm ready to see some football, real Ravens football. All right. Me too. All right. So uh, why don't you start us off? Give us the, the, the first thing you knew, you want to see out of the Ravens offense uh, as they match up versus the Chiefs. Yeah. So the first thing I want to see is how Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely are deployed within the offense, mainly if it's going to be a run or pass look who's in the game more often. Uh, obviously, they have Kohler as a blocking option, but to really be able to key in on that is going to show us who they trust in what situation. And uh, also to see how much 12 personnel they run and to see the combinations they put out as well. Uh, so it's uh, certainly a big thing in this game is is how do they how do they get Anders and Likely on the field together. And it, Maybe it's more important for the Chiefs in some way. I look back at that AFC Championship loss, and they lost that game in large part because the Chiefs put it in the hands of their cornerbacks, their three top cornerbacks, and the Ravens couldn't really beat them. They yep. couldn't. They couldn't really, uh, uh, you know, force them to pay for that. And one way you force them to pay is with size. So if you put Likely and Andrews on the field together, you have a couple guys who are uh, significantly bigger and more difficult for corners to cover, in particular. Um, you know they have other options. They can they can put a safety on them. They can put a linebacker on them, whatever. But um, the more you you uh, do that, it takes away some other things the team can do, like run blitzes. Now, the the flip side of that coin is if you have Andrews and Likely in the game, you probably do not have Patrick Ricard, Ricard in the game. Exactly, and um, I think uh, now that you just mentioned that, back to the AFC Championship game. Putting it on the cornerbacks was almost like what Pittsburgh did in the 08 championship game, and they forced us to throw the ball with Flacco, and we couldn't do it, obviously, in that year. And then the same thing in this season, or last season. They forced us to beat their corners, and we couldn't do it. And I think now this year with a, a healthy Andrews, and I don't know if he's going to be 100% because he's been a little nicked up, but if he's able to be at least 95% of himself, it gives us a better chance to penetrate that Chiefs defense. Okay, well let's uh, let's see if that one comes up. I'll come, I'll I'll come up with my first one, which I think is is adjacent to this. I think they need to establish the run, of course, and I, no one's going to question establishing the run. They need to they need to see if they can do it. They need to see if they can get level two opportunities for Derrick Henry. Um, but I I, I want to be careful about this because. The Chiefs can overcommit to the run, to stopping the run, in a way that the Ravens must pass. And that was a lot of what happened in the AFC Championship game. Everybody's pissed off about the total number of runs, and this is not reasonable. And, you know, I, I you got to run the ball more than six times and blah, 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 blah. All, all that's true um, in, in terms of that particular game. They, they, they should have probably had a few more plays that they, they could have stuck with the run more. Um, but they also, the Chiefs definitely – played heavy box after heavy box. They put the game in the hands of their corners and they won the game that way. So, you know, as they, what it really comes down to is stay with the run as long as the Chiefs don't overcommit to the run. And uh, I think you know, they have a good chance with with the personnel they have to create those good level two first contact opportunities for Henry. Yes, and to your point uh, about what happened in the AFC Championship game, not being able to beat the corners was very impactful, but the flow of the game forced us not to run the ball because we got down so quick. And I just, I, I agree with you on that. Not really being like, we should have run, we should have run. Yes, there should have been instances, but to say, go all the way through on running the ball that day, I don't think would have been the answer. But to your point in this game, I want to see if the offensive line can be powerful at the point of attack especially a guy like chris jones and to see if he's able to not wreck the game and make the other guys have to contribute in the pass rush or even in the run defense category 
they certainly have the size inside now this year, um, particularly if Falele is is the starting right guard, as we all expect. Uh, if Voris is the starting left guard, they they certainly have some run blocking size to deal with. Go, I got to tell you, Voris when he's on the field next to Cleveland and Falele looks very very small. Wow. And, you know, he's six five three fifteen. Uh, he's he's not a small uh, guy by any means. Uh, he just he's kind of a slender build for a lineman. And when you put him next to those other two monstrosities and you, you really uh, uh, you really see a, a, a difference in size, that's very significant. But anyway, I, I presume we're not going to see Ben Cleveland at center in this game. If if we do, I think the Ravens, eat the, it'll be more imperative that they really take advantage of their size advantage if they if they have Cleveland in there at center. Uh, but if they do see Linderbaum back in at center, as a, as I think I expect since he's back at practice, only one absence, by the way, from practice today was Adisa Isaac. And this is where we're recording this on Sunday. That is a very good sign for this team. I mean, bad that Adisa Isaac is out, but good that, uh, that the team is basically healthy entering week one. Yep. And I think uh... – if Leonard Baum can play, that bodes well for the offensive line because we're going to need all the help we have up front, especially if we're going to contain the Chiefs' first wave of attack up front to give Lamar an opportunity to hit those play-action fakes or those quick read throws and just give him the time to at least get the offense going earlier in the season because we did have a struggle against uh, Houston getting hot, mm-hmm. but the next week we came out even hotter. But Let's get the ball rolling early on this offense, especially in year two. Yeah, it, it is. I think crit- punishing run blitzing is something they've really got to be able to do. They've got to be able to, when the when the when linebackers are committed to the line of scrimmage immediately, you really need to punish that with a pass. It's when linebackers are waiting to see what to do, you need to punish them with play action, or you need to effectively run the ball from the mesh. But you've, if you show that look, you should be able to to manipulate that linebacker. Um, and and cause him to take extra read steps and and derive an advantage in both the run and pass games from that. I actually don't think that Spagnuolo is going to let the um, Ravens dictate the game in that manner. I think he'll adapt um, to to create a uh, game plan or or a change in game plan necessary on the fly that will uh, force the Ravens into doing what he thinks he can defend better. Yes, and Steve Spagnola proved to do that in the AFC Championship game. Great defensive coordinator, mm-hmm. uh, one of the more underrated coordinators in the league. I think he's going to force the Ravens to throw. I don't, I don't see us winning the game by running the ball with Derrick Henry 20, 30 times. And on a side note about Derrick, I don't imagine us using him in heavy volume in the beginning of the year. I think everyone's excited to see Derrick Henry, but I think as the year progresses, we'll start to see more and more of him. But in the beginning, I see I think they're going to definitely limit how many how many touches he gets. Well, if he got uh, you know 13, 14 touches in this game, which I think everybody would be really upset for after they have, uh, uh, upset about after they just got Derrick Henry. Yes. Uh, even if he rushes for 85 yards in 13 or 14 touches and the yards per carry look great, um, it, it will still be a, a pretty substantial total workload for the year. We'd still be talking about a, a 250 to 260 carry pace for the yeah. entire season. I don't really believe they're going to they're going to try for more than that. Um, he's very important to the Ravens as a pass blocker. Yes. So, it's, so it's one of the things we uh, we'll hopefully we'll see. Uh, did you did you your second point was what in this in on the offensive side? Uh, just making sure the interior offensive line can handle Chris Jones. If they're able to have a plan for him, kind of like how they did Aaron Donald last year, Aaron Donald did not have one sack. He had a lot of pressures though. We're not going to toss that to the side. Lamar had to do some Houdini work back there, but if they're able to give Lamar some time and make the other guys impact the game, I think that gives us a good chance up front. All right. All right. I I uh, I think the, one of the key things is they can't let the the Chiefs start to win the four man pass rush game. If they do that, they'll they're um, it is one of the ways that Spagnola can say, okay, well we could try and we'll rush, 
and and just rush with four, and we'll see if you can beat that with seven drop into coverage. And uh, Ravens need to be careful about that one as well. That's that's a, an area they can't lose. There's always multiple ways in which you can't lose. That the Ravens will continue to probe and find ways that they can beat the Chiefs' defense. I hope. I hope that they'll have you know answers and and adaptations of their own. But uh, Jones worries the hell out of me too. I'm I'm hoping that Derrick Henry some chip blocks. Uh, or something that that uh, will will slow down Jones a little bit. Um, I want to want to see some pass plays with a lower time to throw when they're run blitzing. So you're forced to you, you, you they're forcing you into a quick throwing offense. I want to see passes that that are more on schedule are called. So that can mean that can mean a play action throw to a to a tight end. But basically, I want it to mean take advantage of Bateman's route running, his ability to break and Find him open more in this game. I think it, it might be more important than just about at any time this year. Yes, and that goes back to my point of us starting hot. I think Lamar being able to hit those curls within the zones between the linebackers, that's what's going to get this offense going. Because if he's not on time on those and he's pumping and hesitating and trying to scramble and make a new play, that's where we're losing in the AFC Championship game. Okay. All right. Now, uh, I know you wanted to talk about the tight ends, right? Uh, I thought I did. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Okay. So, you know, in, in terms of, of seeing 12 on the field, in terms of seeing both Andrews and likely a lot in this game, and I've, I've kind of been through the mental gymnastics on this, and I have trouble to see seeing how the total of the four heavies in the in the Ravens lineup with Ricard and Kohler and, and uh, Andrews and likely – are going to come anywhere near what each of them would like individually in terms of total snap count. That, that I just don't think there's that much of an opportunity to play 12 down after down. I think you end up going back to 11 on third down primarily. Um, you, you, you pick a, cast, a, a pass catching tight end, but in order to stretch the field, in order to, to force uh, you know broader, wider defense, you really need three wide receivers in the game as well. And I, it's, I have... I really have trouble seeing how they're going to get those guys on the field enough. If they can find some way in this game to get two on the field a third of the time, I think it would be that would be a big win towards getting uh, towards going towards a a very heavy tight end offense for the year. Yes, and uh, I think likely is very close to that wide receiver line because he's. He blocks, but he's not a blocking tight end in line mm-hmm. almost. So if we're able to use him in that capacity, it just – because Munkin wants to live in 13 personnel. If you ask him, I think he would just stay in 13 personnel. I don't I don't think uh, that's his philosophy, especially when he's in a groove. I think he's running these bigger and heavier packages just to stay MO with the Ravens mantra. And uh, – I think if you're able to get likely in that 13 role and then Andrews obviously is the one, it just makes it even more easier for us to deploy everyone and everyone gets the snaps they need. Oh, the, the Chiefs are definitely a team that would have a little bit of trouble with much heavier packages, but it's also something where um, Munkin came to the Ravens as a guy who was an 11, you know, I did have some 12 personnel Georgia he had run, but the, the notion was he was going to improve the passing game. Generally, that means more 11. And last year, it meant a ton more 11, less use of a fullback, more of a card in line when he was Oh, in I there. said 13 personnel, didn't I? Sorry. You meant 12. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. But they, they, as the season went on, I mean, we, we saw early in the season when, when Andrews was healthy that likely had a very hard time even getting on the field, getting any targets at all. And then, of course, likely became a superstar in the second half of the year with Andrews out. And now he's faced with that dilemma with both of them back of trying to see how he can get both of them playing time. That really has not occurred yet, by the way. That AFC Championship game, yeah, Andrews was back for that game, but he played you know, 15 snaps or something. It wasn't anything meaningful. He's he's never really been pushed up against the wall in terms of, of having to get both those guys on the field at, at one time yet. Yeah, I'm. I, that's going to be one of the main things I'm looking at: the offensive line and the tight end deployment. All right, outstanding. Uh, if you'll look for this tomorrow, we'll have a matchup show for the defense. Frazier, uh, tell folks where they can talk football with you online. You guys can reach me at x slash Twitter at f underscore rave eight. That's f underscore r a v e eight. 
All right. Other folks out there, if you want to be on a film study short, hit me up. DMs are always open on Twitter. I'm always hearing from new new ideas from new people. Sometimes even if you don't want to do the show yourself, but you'd like to uh, uh, to hear a show on a particular topic, I can find a guest for that. But uh, love to hear from you on that. For Frazier Tafar, this is Ken McCusick saying goodbye. We'll talk to you next time on Matchups.